Okay, so I'm gonna make a crude video how to pull the valves and uh, lap them. This is a Onan, but should be the same for all color engines. Um, Briggs are a little bit different, but all the colors and uh, I know these Onans are the same. You're gonna want a valve spring compressor. This is a Briggs type. I like these because it's just straight down and you stick it in there. Just stick it in there uh, in between two coils, just like it. And you turn the handle and compress it. Okay, once you got it compressed, uh, them things right there uh, can get stuck. So place your socket in there behind it. Uh, grab a hammer, tap the valve, unfreezes, and you can see the keepers. Pretty bad, but putting them back on is even worse, so get ready. Make sure you have some good sticky grease. I like blue mobile grease. So one's off. You'd want to get that spring compressed as much as possible and it will come off better. But I had a pain trying to get this one off, so here we go. Now we can pull our valve out, pull our spring out, our retainer, and our keepers. The lifters will come out also but it won't. Uh, it's a good idea to remove them while you lap the valves. I always do because once you're lapping them, it's grinding down this ring right here so the valve will go farther in and sometimes it'll hit this and it'll just be spinning. Got a rag, I'm gonna wrap them up in. There's the spring, we'll take the spring up there. And here's the retainer. Also a good idea is just to kind of brush off all the carbon around it. And then here in a minute, I'll clean the valve off. I'll tell you about the easiest way to do that. What we have here is a drill press with a normal wire wheel. It's hard to do with one hand. So you want to do it on the side that's coming at you because if you do it like this it'll pull the valve and then for the bottom like around there all that carbon and crap you just do it like this so this is what we're looking for nice you can't feel no carbon on there it's just stained up cool and crap but the top like i said will have to be clean so our suction cup from the lapping tool can stick to it. Okay, so now what I like to do is just apply some oil to the stem just a little bit and we want to get our lapping compound just apply a little bit a few dots here and there probably about quarter inch spacing something like that that's right there is more than enough Slide it in there. We we'll want to clean the suction cup off really good. Make sure it can stick. That's pretty good. And get it wet with spit, whatever. Just lick it. Ain't gonna hurt you. Press it on there. And then act like you're a caveman trying to start a fire. You're gonna wanna put pressure on it this way and also spin it, pull it out, spin it, pull it out. You can hear every time I pull it out, it gets coarser. And then the more I go like that, it gets uh, smoother. And then when we pull it out, coarser. I don't wanna do this until Keep pulling it out and it just as smooth as can be. So 
pull the valve out, get a rag. I want to wipe off the valve really good because that stuff can really harm an engine if it's left inside there. But as you can see, there's just a gray edge around there, not shiny, uh, just a gray, just a dull gray. And then around the valve seat should be the same thing. I'm going to wipe it out. your rag with a clean spot on your rag with the brake cleaner and wipe it out and you see on it it's just a gray ring. One of the most important things about this process is cleaning, keeping everything clean. And brake cleaner is your best friend. I keep at least like 10 cans on stock. Just spray them off, make sure they don't have any junk or old oil on them. Because with these things right here, we're going to put that blue grease on them. And if they have any oil, that grease is just going to sit on top. Make sure this port right here is clean. Wipe off all the crap inside there and dust. And if your engine ain't got any oil in it or if you got the pan off, it wouldn't hurt it a bit if you just sprayed the brake cleaner inside there. Putting everything back in, I find it easiest to just put the spring on the outside or the inside of the little 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 fingers right here so you can get it compressed as much as possible it'll leave you with enough space to put the retainer on and the little stupid keepers on it i got me some blue grease here's the keeper we're just gonna dab some inside there put it to the side get the other one Dab some inside there. Okay. So these things are kind of cone shaped. You're going to want to put the smaller end towards the retainer. It's easier if you do it with a magnet I've found. But you drop it in there and usually they'll fall right into place. And then you'll turn the valve or try to turn the whole thing 180 degrees put the other one in okay just make sure it's in okay they're both in you can see how they made up perfectly uh, then what you'll do, you'll keep pressure on the keeper so they don't fly out. Um, and then just undo your valve spring tool. Uh, and once it gets to bottoming out on the keeper or the uh, retainer and the block, you can just pull it on out. What and I like to do is uh, just rotate the engine. Okay, the intake valve opens, then the exhaust valve. We all know that. Okay, piston comes back up. The specs on these are 13 and 8 uh, thousandths. So normally your exhaust is bigger and your intake is smaller. So we're going to go in between the lifter and the valve stem and put our filler gauge inside there. And usually, 
when we lap valves, it gets a little tight. It'll be like a little nut looking thing and a, a lifter. Okay, and if it's too small, we'll turn it in. So, let me turn it in. Okay, we did about a quarter turn. It's hard to keep the camera on it. And it don't take much. So we did about a quarter turn. Stick our feeler gauge inside there. Test it and see. Nope. Still too small. Okay, so we're going to go another quarter turn. Try it again. Still too small. Go another quarter turn. Okay, try it again. Okay, now it goes in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to tighten it up as much as possible, but still be able to uh, put that feeler gauge inside there. We don't want it to be tight on it. We just want it to just slip in and out, like just a good old fit. Okay, so what you do now is uh. You do the other one, your exhaust, and then if it's a two-cylinder engine, you do the other side. All right, so like I said, the exhaust is normally has a larger valve lash. So if it just gives you two numbers, you just do the larger number for the exhaust most of the time. Um, but to adjust your valves, only thing you need to take off is your uh, your cover right here. Unless your intake or your exhaust is over, you don't have to take off all this. I was doing other things to the engine. Um, so the only thing you need to do when you're adjusting valves is do this. Okay, when you're lapping the valves, uh, you, would, you will need to take your head off and your cover off right here. Just like if you're adjusting them. If one of these are over this, you're going to have to take it off. Um... But it's simple, it's easy, nothing to it. And I must stress this, you have to clean your engine before you do this. I pressure washed it all off and there's still a little bit of grease like over where the, or underneath the intake where it was at. But you have to have a clean engine when you do this because you don't want a bunch of dirt and crap falling down inside your engine. 